Hey everyone, this is Sarah. Welcome to my um, live art lessons. Uh, today is a special day. It's St. Patrick's Day. Um, I, in honor of the many fairy folk that live in Ireland, I am a fairy today. I allowed my wings to come out just for you today. Um, we're going to be doing a special themed uh, painting today. So normally I do drawing on Tuesdays, but I'm switching it up a little bit this week and doing painting today because I don't have a, a St. Patrick's Day themed drawing. And really, this isn't exactly St. Patrick's. It's Shamrocks, though, which is associated with St. Patrick's Day. So um, we are going to do a pot of Shamrocks. So you'll notice I have my color wheel out. I want to talk a little bit about this, but first I just want to share something. So I have two palettes. I have a clean one and I have this one that we were using on Friday and Saturday for the girl with the pearl earring. The reason I left this out is because, so I told you guys last week that if you wrap acrylic paint in plastic and then put it in the freezer, that it will stay fresh. Um, that is true. And I demonstrated that last week. So I wrapped this up to put in the freezer again and forgot about it. But I came to it on my desk and noticed it was still squishy. Look at that. It's still wet. So all you really have to do is wrap it in plastic. And it's not even really all that well wrapped. It just needs most of the air. Like you can see, like it's not, it's kind of coming up and stuff. It's, it's not like terribly well wrapped, but it, blocks the air enough to be able to keep the paint moist. So I wanted to share that with you because I thought that was a brilliant discovery on my part. And uh, hopefully that will be helpful to you that if you wrap it in plastic, um, that should, that should stay. Okay. So I'm putting that to the side though, because we are going to actually mix different paint colors today. Um, and the reason I kept that other one is because I wanted to continue working on my girl with the pearl earring just a little bit off stream. Just haven't gotten a chance to do that yet. All right, so let's talk about the color wheel. So today we're going to be painting three main colors. We're going to have the shamrocks that are green. Hi, Trudy Ann. Welcome to the stream. We have the shamrock that are green. Uh, we will have the pot. It's, it's going to be in a terracotta pot here. Let me just bring up the reference photo that we'll be working from. By the way, if you want to see the reference photo on your screen while you're working, go to this discord site here. There's also a button on my main Twitch page that will take you there. Um, that Feel free to join as well if you have not before, but that is where I post all of the reference photos as well as where we share photos. So let's go over there right now. So as you can see, we've got green shamrocks, kind of an orangish terracotta pot, it's like a reddish orange, and then blue at the bottom. There's also a blue background, which is harder to tell in this. Let me see if I click on it. Um, oh. Okay, hang on. Okay, I was in the wrong window. So, okay, so green, kind of a reddish orange, and then this dark blue. We also have kind of a light blue in the background. You just can't see it, but the, the background is a light blue. Okay, so it's mainly three colors. I mean, you can see that there's some different shades of green in the green shamrocks, but for the most part, you've got the, those three main colors. Okay, so if you notice, you've got green, you've got blue, and then across from them is where you have orange. So this creates colors that are, um, you've got two that are what, what's called analogous, which means that they're similar. They're on the same side of the color wheel. And then you've got one the orange, and really it's a red orange, so it would be these two with this one, um, that is complementary, which means it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So what this does is it creates a certain mood. So our foreground, like the main part of our foreground and background are 
analogous. So that's going to create, um, usually the greens and the blues are a, like a, a, a calming feeling. Usually on the other side, you end up having like a very warm feeling because of the fact, you know, and it's very, uh, let's see, exciting, you know. So we've got this calm feeling over here, but then we've got it balanced with the terracotta pot that's over here. And what that does is it creates what's called, a, a, the, that complementary color creates an accent so that, especially since it's in the middle of the page, I'm gonna bring it back up. Since it's right in the middle, then it creates this really cool balance. Um, I should say interesting balance because it's not exactly cool when we're, when we're talking about the temperature of colors. So I don't want to confuse you, but it's a really interesting balance. Um, and that will make, that's one of the things you think about. This is color theory when you're deciding what colors to choose for a painting you know, consider choosing two colors. So maybe, you know, if we were doing some red poppies, we might do red with like a, a, a yellow orange or an, a light orange background. And then maybe they're in a green pot or a teal pot. So that would be on the opposite side. So things to consider. Um, all right. So I don't know if I said it yet, but happy St. Patrick's Day, and in honor of um, St. Patrick and of Ireland, I have allowed my wings to come out. That's I'll be wearing them. Um, so there you go. I'm fairy today. Many of the fairy folk live in Ireland. So uh, okay, we talked about the color wheel. As usual, we have the phthalo blue, naphthol crimson or naphthol red, it's fine. Um, titanium white, burnt umber, and cadmium yellow medium. Those are the colors we're gonna be using today. We're not mixing any fancy colors like we did last time, uh, where I had a different, like with the, the girl with the pearl earring, um, had colors that we had to kind of make up, like the um, Payne's gray. We don't have to do that today. So. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create uh, a wash. Now I will be, for the first thing I'll be using, I've got two brushes, a size six round brush and a size 12 filbert. Filbert just means it's a flat brush that has this rounded top. Um, I've got my water. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my water, my brush ready. And by doing that, I'm gonna show you. You just want to push it down on the bottom, almost like you're painting the bottom of the page. I mean the, the page really painting the bottom of the cup. So that just gets the water inside and the air bubbles. So sometimes you see little air bubbles coming up. Okay. Now we're going to take our phthalo blue and we're going to make a little bit of a wash. So I'm just doing a little tiny bit of phthalo blue and then I'm going to add some water to it. And this is what's going to make the wash. So all I do, like we do with watercolor, I get water on my brush and then I just uh, kind of pull it across the top of the well and that will get water in there. Okay, so once we get enough water in there, we'll see how this goes. I always just test it. I get some water in there and test it. We're going to use our palette knife and mix it up. Yeah, this looks like it'll probably be a pretty good wash. Looks like I have a little visitor, like some kind of little fly or something got in the house. I had my window open earlier and that happens, but it's really nice here. So I like to enjoy having the windows open when I can. I'm in Florida and we've been having pretty nice weather lately. 
Now I just made like a little bit of a mess here and that reminds me I'm not because I'm wearing my green I guess I could go ahead and put on my apron. I guess fairies can wear aprons, right? Just so I don't mess up my cool green dress. This is actually a dress that I've worn before as Tinkerbell, maybe even with these same wings uh, for Halloween. So, all right. apron because acrylic paints are messy so we're gonna I'm gonna put the apron on this is the most Im important and exciting part of the stream it's watching me put on my my apron and adjust it okay well maybe not adjust it because it doesn't seem like it wants to adjust so well, whatever. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our wash. Now, because it's mostly water, you don't have to wet your brush again. Just a reminder, if you're using craft paints like this. I don't recommend it. I recommend using tube paints, even if it's not big tubes, even if you can find, like I know Walmart has smaller tubes of paint. Um, but if for some reason you are using this, it's already liquidy. So you do want to water it down just a little bit to get the wash so it's not like a pure color, but um, you don't need to water it down as much. Okay. So I'm getting some of this on my brush and just going back and forth. This is a very light color. In fact, I want it to be even lighter. So I'm just going to come in and just bring even more water into it. I want this to be very light. What I might even do, because this is not nearly light enough for me. I mean, I can bring more water into it, but that's just going to make it really take a long time to dry. Come on. I'm trying to bring some of this down. What I might do is add a little bit of white into this. We'll see. So we're just doing, we're kind of just doing the top part, but it's going to go pretty far down to about there. Oh, I know what I might do. I'm going to test something. So if you're following along with me, don't do this just yet. I want to test something and I'm basically I'm taking my brush by the way and just going all the way across we are in a portrait orientation because um, because our pot of shamrocks is going to be going up and down so we, instead of a landscape you'll find that a lot of still lives and this would be considered a still life um, a lot of still lives are going to be in portrait the, the up and down orientation. Okay. So I'm going to just try something here. Don't try with me yet. If you're following along. Yep. Okay. So what I'm doing is I just took my crumbled up, uh, paper towel and I'm just coming in and just dabbing. So this is also going to create texture. Now what's really interesting is that it was a little dry up in that top corner. So, so what ended up happening is it created like this line here. Let's do this. I'm 
I'm going to get a little more water in here. It's actually created really interesting texture. But I don't want there to be any like super solid line, so. Oops, you can see my fingers. I don't want that. Now our pot is gonna be right in this area, so it's not terribly. Hi, Teacher Margo, welcome. Say happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, okay. Tell Andrew happy St. Patrick's Day as well. Okay. Yeah, I probably do need some uh, titanium white here. Maybe just in the center part, just in the center part where it was a little light. And that's so now I know for next time when I'm teaching this class, I would teach it. Uh, what like we would actually start doing the dabbing rather than um, rather than worrying about continuing to add more water. So lesson learned. Okay, maybe even let's see if I add a little bit of water. Okay, it should be good though. We're fine and it'll dry pretty quickly too because of the fact that um, it's so thin now because we dabbed it. But it creates interesting texture in the back and that's fine. Now, we're going to add some red to this, about the same amount, like a pea sized. We're gonna mix that in. And this is going to give us like a purple, really almost like uh, an ultramarine blue. Well, that's darker than ultramarine, but it's pretty close. So this was a warm blue. Now we're going to use a cooler blue at the bottom. Okay. And this paper towel is pretty much gone already. And I just started. Okay. New paper towel. So now we're going to do this bottom part. So pick up some of this. Oh, this is looking pretty dark actually. Hmm. Oops, got some red that wasn't completely mixed in. Well, you know what? That's just gonna make this even more interesting. But this one is less of a wash, so we want it to be covered. All right, so now what I'm doing is making sure my line's pretty straight because this is like our tabletop. So I'm just drawing my brush across the top. Put it down flat. So I put it down flat and just pull it across the top. That's how you get a nice even line in the background. I also kind of move my hand along with it. So when I'm, rather than moving my wrist, I move my whole hand. That helps. Okay. Now we need this to dry. So I'm going to clean off my brush and the way you clean your brush is similar to how we let the water in in the beginning. You just sit there and pretend like you're painting the bottom of the cup. So we're going to get a little bit of a different feel if you mixed your colors as dark as me. Um, if you didn't, and yours is a little bit lighter blue, then that's perfectly fantastic. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and um, mix up our other colors while this is drying. By the way, for anyone who is um, new on the stream, I just wanted to let everyone know 
that I had kind of an exciting uh, revelation. I this is my paints from the girl the the um, girl with the pearl earring that we did on Friday and Saturday. So these paints are are wet from Saturday. I wrapped them because I wanted to continue working on that and uh, forgot to put them in the freezer. Wah, wah. <laughs> but I came and I noticed that the paint still looked kind of supple. So I like just touched it through and it's still wet. It's still good. So apparently, even if you don't put it in the freezer, as long as you wrap it and keep the air out of it, it will keep. So that was like a really great thing for me to learn. So I just wanted to make sure everybody um, got that if you came in a little bit late because that was just like a pretty cool thing. Okay, so let's start mixing our terracotta color. So we've got cadmium yellow medium and we're going to do equal parts of this and our red. So I'm gonna skip because I still have that drip in there. I need to get that out. All right, and equal part are naphthol crimson. Guess what yellow and red make? Orange. I know you guessed that. Okay. So we're mixing. That's a pretty red orange, but that's okay because terracotta is like kind of a red orange. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of our burnt umber to this to brown it up some. So we don't need much, just a pea size amount. That looks like more because I it smeared a little bit. Oops. Okay. So I'm mixing in a little bit of burnt umber with my orange that I made. And the burnt umber actually has a little bit of yellow in it too. So that's going to make that a little more orange than it was. It was kind of a red orange. I'm mixing it really well since my other one didn't get mixed so well. So I'm just making sure this is really, really, really nice and mixed. That is a fantastic terracotta color. So that's our terracotta color. Now I'm going to mix our green that we'll be using. It's, I'm looking to see. You can tell if your um, painting is dry if you tilt it and you can still see shiny bits. It's not dry. I can still see shiny bits. So um, we are going to continue mixing color. All right. So we're going to use our phthalo blue and our cadmium yellow to make our greens. All right. Now there's a very specific green that we want here. And it's a little bit of a, a yellow green. So we're gonna have a little more yellow than we have blue. Blue is a very powerful color as well. So I'm not gonna put as much of the blue. I'm gonna put just a pea size amount. I put two drops for the yellow. And I'm just gonna put, whoop, if it'll come off, one drop for the blue. And we'll see what we get. We can always add more blue or more yellow. But what we're looking for is we're looking for a very shamrocky green, kind of a Kelly green. And it looks like that's what we got. 
Thalo blue, because it's a warm blue, is going to make it's a, a little bit more in the teal family. It already has some green in it. So you don't want to mix too much of the blue and then you end up getting dark green. Barilla, welcome. Happy, uh, I don't, happy St. Patrick's Day. We're doing shamrocks today. Do you or have you ever painted with your palette knife? Well, with my oils I have. In acrylics I don't because it takes, uh, it dries so quickly. And with a palette knife, you need it to be able, you need to be able to continue to move it around and manipulate it. So um, I've never done that with um, acrylic paints, but with oils I have, yes. That's a really good, great question. And welcome to the stream. Okay, so we've got this Kelly green. Now, I want to make, I'm just gonna keep the green. I'm not gonna worry about washing this. I'm gonna make a light green, like a very yellow green. So I'm just gonna put yellow down. And I'm just gonna start mixing it with this kind of, I might pick up just a tiny bit of the green, but I'm gonna mix it with this dirty palette knife. The case of the dirty palette knife. If anybody who's coming on the stream late is wondering about the wings, if you, if you notice them, um, I know they look so natural on me. But um, this is part of my St. Patrick's Day fun. Since there are a lot of fairy folk living in Ireland, this is in honor of them. Oops, look what I did. Okay, got a little too exuberant there. We'll just pick that up, put that right back in the palette. But I don't want that to continue to be wet. So um, I'm going to just, even though it's paper, I still, you know, I'll be setting my palette down on it and things like that. So um, I don't want to have paint on the bottom of the palette. If you are just joining, I've already mentioned it in the stream, but I, I really want to mention it again because it was just such a cool revelation. Uh, from Saturday's stream, I had the, my leftover paint. I wrapped it in plastic and I meant to put it in the freezer, like I told you guys, forgot. But then when I came over to it, I realized the paint was still wet. So like, it's actually still um, wet underneath the plastic. So I learned that you don't necessarily have to put it in the freezer. Freezer is good because it'll stay a lot longer. But if for some reason you forget to put it in the freezer, I mean, it's been what? three days, you know, and it's still wet. So that's pretty cool. So that was very exciting. Okay. Um, so I've got some different paint colors here. Cleaning my palette knife. All right. So let's see, this should be dry. It's pretty dry. I see a couple of areas that's not, but it should be dry enough. Ah, Nopester. I did not know you were gone, but Welcome back. Okay. So we're going to start with, oh, look. That green is getting everywhere. It's because I was just getting so crazy with it. I was just mixing it. All right. So let's go ahead and use our... Um, large brush again, uh, our filbert. I'm gonna get it wet, wipe off the water, the excess water, and then I'm gonna pick up some of my terracotta by coming in and just brushing into the paint a little bit. You don't wanna just pick up the paint that you first, like as soon as you did that, because it's gonna be very watery. So what I'm doing is essentially kind of mixing in that water that was on my brush with the paint right at the edge there. All right, so we need to figure out the shape of our terracotta pot. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how, where we want the bottom to be. I'm gonna go ahead and say probably about an inch above. So right about there. 
and it's going to be curved. So we're going to do a smile. Let's see. Let's do a pretty big smile. Like that. Now I will be doing, uh, I don't know when it's coming up, but I will be doing a, um, a stream possibly even next week on cylinders, like a study of cylinders. So we'll talk about like the shapes of cylinders and how to get shadows and stuff. Cause we are going to be doing some shadows today, but I'm not going to dive into it too much today more. I want to get the, the, we're just going to focus on the total painting. As y'all know, I usually try to focus on the studies and like the actual techniques in my drawing streams rather than my painting streams. Okay. Now, um, our pot comes up, you know, it's not straight up and down. So we're going to have, it's going to be wide a little bit. So it kind of goes out a little bit. And then we're going to have a rim that is a little bit, um, wider. So there and there, and then we'll do another smile. Okay. Now we are going to do a smile for the top, but at first we're going to do the opposite. It's going to be like a rainbow, a little arch there. And right now we're just getting the, the colors down. Then we'll come in and we'll do a smile that's going to be parallel. And notice I messed up a little bit there. That's okay. Because we're actually going to do um, the, the colors on the outside are going to be a little bit different than the colors on the inside. So let's go ahead and pick up some more of our terracotta color. And I'm just going to do really short choppy strokes. When I get close to my edge, I'm going to go slow just to be careful. And you'll see where we can see our blue color through. So we'll have to do a couple of coats, but I'm just doing short choppy strokes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That's how short choppy strokes, top choppy strokes, say that three times fast, short choppy strokes. That's how they sound though. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay. So, I always feel like my streams are like a lot of extraneous information to get to the really good information that teaches you about painting. <laughs> it's there. It's there folks. It's there somewhere. Okay. My little nuggets of information. All right. So little choppy strokes. Now I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to come in and do a second coat. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to put a little bit of brown. We don't need much of it, but just a little bit and a little bit of yellow because we're going to be using this in to highlight in low light. Okay. So the yellow is actually going in a different spot. Okay. So while that's drying, we're going to do short choppy strokes for this very top part here. Short choppy strokes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Like I said, we'll be adding shadows and highlights. It's going to make this look a lot more realistic. All right. So we've got that part. Now, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to do this part here smooth. Why are you doing that? Sarah, you might ask, 
because I'm giving it a different texture. So I'm going to actually get a little bit of water on my brush so that it smooths it out. It won't be super noticeable right away, but once we add highlight in it, it will be more. But you'll see it makes a difference. See, you can tell the difference though. Just, just from me doing that, that different stroke with my brush. This is actually probably a good lesson to show you how different brush strokes really can affect the way your painting looks. I'm trying to be very careful towards the edge here. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do our second coat down here. So short choppy strokes. And this will add to our um, painting. But also what this is doing is it's giving me a wet surface again that I can directly mix on the canvas. Now you guys might be thinking, Sarah, we just went through a whole ordeal of you mixing on the canvas with the girl with a pearl earring and it made you take a really long time to paint it. Yes, but we were mixing our own colors and things like that. So I'm picking up yellow, by the way. We were mixing our own colors and, um, you know, the colors ended up not being exactly what I thought they were, how I thought I had mixed them. Okay, so notice I'm just coming in here and because the paint's wet, it's blending with it, right? Now I'm painting, our light source is coming from this side. So it's over here somewhere, maybe like where the cup is. It's like a lamp or something. Or maybe the pot is sitting in a window. Maybe the owner of this particular plant loves its plant and put it near a nice big sunny window. So I've got on the very far side, there's going to be even more yellow because it's going to be much lighter. Now I'm not going all the way up to the rim of the pot because there's always going to be a little bit of a shadow under that. And in fact, now I'm starting to think I need to be, be using the smaller brush. So I'm going to wash this brush off quickly because I don't want this stuff to dry. Okay. And I made the mistake. I got outside my lines a little bit. So I'm going to clean this up and show you guys how to do that. So it was still wet. So I came in and just painted with just water along the outside here. And you see how I'm smearing it, but what I'm going to do now is clean up that smear by just painting it and then drying and then painting and then drying like that. Okay. Let's get our round brush. All right. So I'm getting it wet. Let's see, I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and I'm going to come right at this outside edge here. And this time, because I have them using a smaller brush, I can be a little bit more precise as to where my, uh, my brush strokes are. Now, because I'm using a smaller brush, also my brush strokes are different than they were before, right? You know, because it, it would have been a nice broad brush stroke. So I need to pay attention to that and just make sure I'm blending properly and that everything looks like how I want it to look. Okay. So now I'm just coming in and just trying to blend upwards a little bit close to the rim, but not right all the way up to it. I got a little bit down here. Hopefully this was still wet. Maybe it wasn't. Well, it's okay. Yeah. All right. So our terracotta on this side is probably already dry again or close to it. So I'm just going to bring some more in. I'm 
blend it in a little bit with the, the yellow that we just did. So all I'm doing is coming in here and just putting pure terracotta, the, the color that we mixed earlier, which if anybody's just now joining, I made using red and yellow and then adding a little bit of brown to it. Now I'm gonna add pure burnt umber. So I'm just gonna pick it up with my brush and start coming in here on the right hand side because this is going to blend and it's gonna darken up this side of our pot. Now this time we can go right up underneath the rim. I'm gonna get a little bit of water cause I want it to be a little tiny bit more um, fluid than it is. And I'm going to come around underneath the pot. And I'm doing this smoothly, but we're gonna choppy it up. So don't worry, we're still following this choppy quality but I wanted to get it a nice clean line down first happy st. Patrick's Day to anyone who's just joining us I am dressed as a fairy you aren't seeing things um, that is to honor the many fairy folk who live in Ireland I feel like this could be just as much their day as Patrick's all right, so I'm coming in and I'm just blending with that terracotta color, short, choppy strokes. Bloop, 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 short, choppy strokes. All right, now the bottom here is gonna have almost the darkest of colors. It's where the shadow is gonna end up being, which we're not putting in shadow just yet. But just preparing you for the inevitable, the inevitable shadow, the shadow of doom. Dun, dun, dun. Speaking of doom, who's excited about Friday? What? Doom Eternal. Should be, should be pretty cool. There should be some pretty good streaming going on, I'm sure. I will be watching. Okay, I'm picking up a little bit of terracotta. I don't play uh, FPS, but I love to watch them, so. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to pick up ever so slightly a little bit of yellow because I ended up getting, you can see this like kind of line where it's not blended. So all I'm doing is coming in here and I'm just going to blend it. It just wasn't wet enough anymore. It's okay to a certain extent, even if you wanted to leave it, it would be okay because it leaves that kind of choppy look to it. See, it's got like, to me, it looks very leathery almost. Okay. Oops. I'm getting water on the, this is why you have to be careful getting water on the, Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue that we made earlier and just come around the bottom here just to clean that up. We're going to be cleaning it up with shadow later, but um, just in case, I just want, I just like having it clean. And so I'm notorious for getting outside the lines. Oop, that had a lot of red in it. Well, good thing that's going to be shadow. So anyway, what I'm doing, just cleaning up the lines. Ta-da. Okay. Now, now we're going to work with this top part here. So let's pick up some terracotta and go ahead and get some short, choppy strokes. I got to say it slow every time because I'm, it'll, it's just going to run together for me if I don't. So if you're just joining the stream, I'm catching you up. 
that we have, we did a, a light blue wash. I did discuss the color wheel and how we've got bl uh, blues and we're gonna have greens, as you can see here, for our shamrocks. And then the terracotta color is a red orange on the opposite. So you, you end up creating, um, this is called a complementary color. These are called analogous colors. So um, we talked about that at the beginning of the stream that it creates a really nice balance and it creates visual interest to have colors that are both similar and then you have like an opposite color. Okay, so I've got some extra terracotta color down. I'm going to pick up my brown, my burnt umber, and Remember our light source is coming from this side. You're gonna actually have more dark over here because it's directly facing away from the light source. So it's got the most shadow. We're gonna leave the rim the color that it is. So don't go all the way to the top. Short, choppy strokes, doot, doot, doot. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, and then we're blending. We're just blending it. I'm just basically taking my brush and it has less and less paint on it. And I'm just moving into the, the terracotta color. And of course, when you come back, you're gonna move some of the terracotta color back into your dark, which just creates even more of a blend. This is like my favorite thing to do is to blend. If you were here for my Girl with the Pearl earring, I talked about it kind of a lot of how much I like to blend. So um, we can actually add a little bit more brown here. I think I blended just a bit too much. <laughs> too much blending. Dun, dun, dun. That happens when you love to do something. Sometimes you do it too much. Let it be a lesson. Moderation is key. It is. Okay. I just realized it's like uber hot in my house right now. I had the window open earlier and I closed it. But like now I'm hot. Okay. So, uh, we've got our dark color in here. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about this side. However, I am going to make our, remember our very smooth, uh, the rim here and I'm actually evening evening this out up here I just realized I had some places that I missed so all I'm doing is just I picked up a little bit of burnt umber and I'm just kind of like working it into until I get down to the rim okay good now I'm going to pick up some terracotta. Remember we did this smooth. So everything else we've done these short choppy strokes, we did smooth up here. So you can actually get a little bit of water, pick up some, some of your terracotta color and be smooth, smooth as silk. Now I'm coming down. Oops, I, wanna, I don't want to paint over my um, shadow that I just did there at the bottom. Okay. Welcome to anyone just joining the stream. I'm apparently painting over shadow. Also, happy St. Patrick's Day. Lots of green and fairy wings and things to be had here. Okay, so carefully, I'm coming in and doing my smooth lines. Now, back here is going to still be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna leave that the terracotta color. But in the front, I'm gonna pick up some of my yellow. And this is just pure yellow. I'm gonna put in a couple of strokes here. And then I'm going to blend. 
So our light source is coming from the right. Now, I was telling everyone that I will be, hopefully soon, it may even be next Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a stream on um, drawing cylinders. We're going to do a study of cylinders. I think it is next week. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm going to put a little extra yellow here in the front that I'll actually be going into more detail of things like the shadows and the highlights of cylinders next Tuesday. I like to do my studies and teaching of different kinds of techniques. I like to do those in my drawing classes. I'm picking up just a little bit of my terracotta color just so I can blend it so I still have some dark terracotta in the back. Okay, so now we have our pot. We can even maybe pick up just a tiny bit of the dark for the very, very, very back. We're not going to bring it too far forward. And the reason I'm doing smooth strokes here is two things, two reasons. One, I want to show you how brush stroke really can matter when it comes to a painting, like how the types of strokes you use really make a difference. But also because, um, like I want it to be two different textures here. That creates visual interest. Now, now we're going to, while this is drying, we're going to uh, come down here and we're gonna do a little bit of shadow in the, uh, like our tabletop. All right, how we're gonna do this is actually, it's gonna surprise you, but we're gonna add a little bit of white to the blue mixture that we had earlier. Because guess what? This is already dark enough to be a shadow. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, just before I start mixing the white, I'm gonna get some more blue in here so that it's really nice and dark. Right at the left side, because remember our light source is coming from the right, so right at the left side, okay, I just mixed a little bit of water just to get it to kind of smooth out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add our white. So I'm going to actually add the white directly to my palette knife. And that's too much white. So we want like half a pea size. That's probably good. Actually, maybe even a little less because there's not that much left of our blue mixture here. So let's just see what this does. We can always add more. So I'm just mixing up that color. Well, now that looks pretty purple. Interesting. I guess that is kind of a purple. I did mix red and blue, so it's not like I should be that shocked that it's kind of a purple color. But I think I added more red than I intended. All right, so we're gonna get some water on our brush and we're not gonna, I'm not, I'm just tapping it. I'm not actually wiping it off. I'm going to mix in the color and you can see it was kind of a, a ter the terracotta color. My water's like that terracotta color. That's okay. Um, I'm just trying to get a watery mixture. And I'm gonna come in here on the right side and paint. I'm gonna be very careful when I get up to the terracotta pot so as not to paint over my pot as I am so want to do sometimes. All right. 
Now, as we get to this part here, I'm going to just add a little bit of water. Actually, I just ended up washing my brush, but that's okay. And we're just going to kind of mix the colors together with the water. What I'm what it's doing is it's allowing it to uh, get lighter there. I'm going to blend a little bit, not much because it's actually looking pretty good, but I'm just going to come in and just blend my edges a little bit. Okay, and I do need a little tiny bit more on this side, so I'm just going to pick up just a tiny bit, put it at the top there, and I accidentally painted into my terracotta, but it's not much and it's very watery so I'm able to pick that up okay I'm watering down my brush and I'm just gonna come in and just paint that down a little bit like we did over here okay so I dried my brush just now Here we go. So now we have our shadows. So see, we did this a little bit different than we did the, um, you know, this. Like here we added the dark. Here we added the light. So there's two different ways to get your shadow. You could do like we did um, for the table and do dark first and then add light a light color. Um, or you can go the other way. I'm noticing that there's a little bit of an area here that's a little bit uh, darker than I wanted. So I'm just coming in and adding a little bit of the my lighter color. This can be choppy too. Most of our painting can really be choppy. It was really just that rim. Oh, and I got water on my canvas, so I'm going to be careful of that. All right, uh, and it still looks dark. Well, it's okay. I'm gonna leave it. I'm making a decision here to leave it. All right, our terracotta should be pretty dry now. So now we can come in and we've got our green color already. So let's get our um, round brush. Make sure that it's nice and wet. You can wipe off any extra. I'm going to get a new paper towel because this paper towel is history. My wings keep hitting my mirror because I'm not used to wearing them. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, um, with two different shades of green. So we're going to, I'm going to start with the lighter green. I'm going to start right at the top of the rim here, okay? So I'm going to start there. I'm going to draw a line up and then let it kind of just wander over. I'm going to do another one. Now, if you notice that it's dry brushing, which means that you're not getting a fluid line, it's, it's kind of be it's jagged where you can see little bits of the canvas behind it, then just add a little bit of water and mix it in with the paint at the edge of the well. So I'm going to do another one here. This one's going to kind of wander off that way. Now I'm going to pick up, I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my dark color. And see, because I didn't clean my brush, some of that light color got in there. What? Okay, I'm gonna get a little more water on. I'm gonna pick up some more of my dark color. Get 
second one in there. I'm going to do one there. I'm going to pick up some of my light color and do another one. Um, let's see. So I, this time I started at the top. Sorry, I didn't realize my my painting had started wandering up. All right. Um, let's do a couple more. This one that way. Pick up a little bit of dark. So I'm just kind of going every which way with my with my greens. So let's see. I want to have I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light color. I want to have one that comes over this way and goes up almost to the top because I'm going to be when I do the leaves they're going to go off of the canvas because we want to create some more interest by having some go off of the canvas all right so maybe we'll have one come down this way oops and see how that dry brushed on there it's because I didn't have enough water so I'm gonna try that again there we go that way I'm gonna have one come this way I'm gonna get a little bit of dark I'm gonna have one come over here. We're just getting all different kinds of, of greenery in here. Maybe I'll have another one come out that side. And let's see, I'm looking at the reference photo to see if there's any that maybe I want to add. I feel like this is a pretty good amount. And this is, we're going to, I'm going to work with this. Maybe I'll have one here okay now what we can do um, we can take a little bit of our yellow let's get some water but we do not have to clean our brush because what we're doing is making like a very light green and I'm just mixing it right at the edge of that yellow and some of our stems I'm just painting the very top of the stem And that's just creating a highlight. And I'm not being particularly careful. Like, I mean, I'm trying to stay with the shape of the stem, but I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not trying that hard. There we go. Now some of them, if you did what I told you, which was to um, mix your colors kind of like and, and not wash your brush in between, you already sort of have some highlights. So, okay. Now, now we're gonna start creating some of our leaf shapes. So shamrocks are a little bit like hearts. Um, so we've got, actually, I'm gonna start with my dark green first. So pick up a little bit of the darker green and we'll put, I'm going to start with this one here, all it is is two bumps, two bumps there. So it does, it's not an exact heart shape and then there's some on the other side too. And 
And remember I said this was going to go off the page a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more. I'm going to do a little leaf right here. And so you'll notice some of them don't quite have the full shape. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do one here. So some of them I'm just doing like a little bit of an oval, oval that's kind of flat on the top. So here, I'm going to do the back one first. Because there's going to be some overlap. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. I'm going to give you like a future, a future look. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light green and just go in in some of the areas like and just do like a just kind of a rounded shape so I did that one first because there's gonna be a layer of one over it so I wanted it to already have like its highlighted areas and you can blend a little bit if you want Um, you can also take like your green. Well, I might add a little bit, add a little bit of brown in here. That really wasn't successful. Hold on. There we go. Just a little bit in it, like, uh, you know, it just really adds some texture, but also some um, layering. Okay, so let's get more, let's get more in here. I'm not going to worry about this one yet. I'm going to wait for this to dry. I've got one that's coming off the page over here. Problem with wearing these wings is it's making me want to like hunch a little bit. Uh, I cannot do that. No hunching. Uh, let's see, have kind of a leaf here. Mm, let's see. This one, I'm going to have like some big, big leaves, like maybe one going off the page. The shamrocks don't always, aren't always connected like we think, you know, those are the little clovers. So I'm just picking up more water. Bloody wing, hello, welcome. So right now we're painting in our uh, shamrock leaves. I had to think about that for a second. Happy St. Patrick's Day, if you're just joining. Okay, so remember we've got kind, it's kind of heart shape, but not really. So I just do like those very loose humps like a heart. Um, I've just decided I'm going to have another one here. So I just like created. Because I want this to be like a full, a very full looking.
So exciting bits of information. If you are just joining, I know I mentioned it already like three times, but it's worth mentioning again because uh, it's very exciting. But my palette from uh, the girl with a pearl earring, I wrapped it, meant to put it in the freezer and forgot. So I, I went and I was gonna try to clean it out and I realized that they were still wet. So apparently just wrapping helps. It doesn't necessarily have to go in the freezer. I think the freezer helps if it's gonna be a, a really long time, but if it's just a few days, apparently it just has to be wrapped. So, thought that was really excellent information to have. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing some leaves that just kind of maybe come over the side, like there's invisible, you know, there's uh, stems that we can't see. Let's see, I'm gonna do one here. Let's see, I'll do one here. This one's maybe we're looking at it from the side. So we talked a little bit about color theory and I showed how like the three colors that we've got going on are blues, our greens and our orange. You've got green and blue on this side of the color wheel and you've got your red orange on the opposite side, complementary color. So what you have is two analogous colors and one complementary color, which creates a, a lot of visual interest. So we just talked a little bit about that. You have a very small freezer, even if you do traditional, you wouldn't have the space. Well, see, then that works out. Apparently my discovery that just wrapping it in plastic wrap will keep it. It does not have to go in the freezer. So see, that was valuable information for both of us. All right, so I'm, I'm just doing like a random leaf in here. Let's see. I'm gonna do some leaves up here. We just need to get them all over, all over. Man, it's like really hot in my house today. This is what happens in Florida. It's really nice and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna open my windows. And then all of a sudden it's like, nope, too fast, too fast. It goes from like 60 to 85 in an hour. It's a very hot state. Not gonna lie, I won't be sad when I leave. I will not be sad. Okay. It's funny because I love the heat, but I wasn't made for the, the humid, the humid hot heat is not cool. My aunt wants me to come live in Arizona. I, I'm thinking about it. We'll see. We'll see. You know, that might be a possibility. I do want to get closer to the West Coast. I think, you know, I've never lived on the West Coast and so I'd kind of like to kind of like to see what that's all about before I up and leave the country, you know, like, well, I should at least check out a little more than just the Southeast. I've, I've visited, I've, but I've never lived there. Okay, um, let's see. I'm getting some leaves in here. This isn't filling up fast enough. I want it to fill up faster. Okay. I'm probably being too picky. This is what happens is I'm like, ooh, I want the perfect placement for my leaves. Now nah, just paint them in. Just get them in there, because you can always, you can always uh, customize stuff later. All right, what I did here is I painted this and accidentally painted over one of the stems, so I just kind of paint, painted the stem in. And I will go back and put a highlight on it later. 
All right, so let's get a couple leaves kind of going down. Okay. Who, man. I, I know a couple of you guys on the stream are also in Florida, so you're probably feeling my pain a little bit. Although you might have been smart enough to close the window and put the um, AC on sooner than I did, so. Plus I've got my computer, which is pretty powerful, so it, it gets kind of hot. It's got two fans. Okay. I say it's pretty powerful. It's really not all that powerful. I want a fancier computer, but parts cost money. So it's going to be a while. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I already have one. If you notice, I already have one up here that I didn't do like the kind of a third shamrock. So, um, this one, I don't want to leave it like that. Or you have this weird mirroring effect. It's a little bit like if you're working in digital and you use like a clone, it just looks off. I don't, I don't want that. So I need to go ahead. It's going to go off the page, but I want to go ahead and get a third one in there. All right, let's see. Just, I might actually have another one, another one come all the way up to the top. Get some, get some leaves going on that. Oh, so probably there, if there were like St. Patrick's Day festivals and stuff today, at least here in the U.S., I, I don't know if any of them actually happened. There's supposed to be a cool balloon festival this weekend that I was kind of excited about. I like hot air balloons. They're really cool. And, uh, yeah, I don't, that got canceled. Well, it didn't get canceled. It got postponed to July, but I don't plan on being in Florida in July. So for me, it got canceled. Um, July is when Florida basically turns into what you might think hell is like, at least this part of Florida. It's brutal. It's like you can cut the air with a knife because it's so hot and humid. It's almost like Houston, but Houston has a lot of pollution. So add that. And I even really liked Houston, but not the weather. Nope, did not love the weather. But I think we're very, I think where I am now is very similar um, latitude to Houston. So it kind of makes sense. And we're both on the Gulf Coast. The Gulf of Mexico, that is. For any of you, if you're outside of the United States. All right. So I'm doing like all these kind of like one offs. I'm trying to get some more in there, but this is just taking way longer. So I'm going to do another one down here. But what we might end up doing, let's see. Well, it's all right. We'll just keep working. We're not that far away. We're not that far off. Just do some random ones in the middle here. But yeah, usually they're like parades and stuff. Oh, this guy doesn't have anything. There's usually like parades and things for St. Patrick's Day and... I bet a lot of that stuff didn't happen because of the whole virus thing. So 
you know, I guess I might as well join in and say, stay safe, everyone, you know, wash your hands, be healthy. How about that? I can, I can say that. I feel comfortable saying that. I feel like I open up my email these days and like every single email is some CEO telling me how they feel like, you know, what their stance is on the, um, Corbin 19. So I've gotten more emails from CEOs now than I ever did when I actually worked with CEOs <laughs> when I was at Lowe's where I, I talked to CEOs on a regular basis. But now I mean, like, I'm just being bombarded. Okay, this guy down here is dry now. Looks a little funky, but it's okay because it's going to be covered. So we're going to do one guy in the front. Another guy kind of layered behind. And we'll add a little bit to that so that you can see it. We've got... This goes behind it. But I'm sure some of you are having the same thing where like companies you've subscribed to for an email and stuff like that, you're getting emails from their CEOs telling you how concerned they are and reiterating World Health Organization stuff. You know. I'm trying not to be too cavalier about it because, you know, I don't know what your situation is, but I don't think it's going to be too bad in Florida, to be honest, just because um, I'm picking up a little bit of this light color because I'm going to bring some of that in here. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Hold on. Oops. Sorry. I'll just pick up some green. Go right over that. It's okay. I forgot this is in the shadow. I really need to be doing that over there. See, I got talking about Corona and, and got distracted. <laughs> okay. Let's do... I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown. I'm just taking care of this leaf right here because... It is definitely in the shadow. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and come around the outside of some of these leaves that I just made. Clean my brush and I'm just gonna blend them just a little bit. And this should work because I just, uh, the paint's fresh. Uh, no really, no really wet, I'm sorry, I missed it. So I don't know what you were, referring to there, Bloody Wing. I said a lot of things. If you're just joining us, welcome and happy St. Patrick's Day. We've got our um, tabletop, I guess. We've got that done with our shadow. We got our terracotta pot done with shadow and highlights. And now we're working on the leaves of our shamrocks how is that for a recap that's probably the fastest recap i've ever done in my life in my life succinct is not what the people who know me well would call me at all so every time i i do something succinct Oh, you don't get emails from CEOs? Oh, well, I'm getting a ton of them. Maybe I sign up for too many things. <laughs> that, that's in, entirely possible. I've got, you know, like, trying to think what we have here, what I've got. So like, I got, well, part of it is apps that I sign up for, like Chick-fil-A, for example. Okay, so I got an email from Chick-fil-A CEO. The one company I haven't gotten an email from, they just have it on their website for you to see when you go out there. Unobtrusive. It's not like a pop-up or anything. You know, it's not anything. And this is just one more reason why I absolutely love this company. Amazon. Amazon 
has not been a pain about this. They have not sent me any emails. The only email I got from them was to tell me that I earned my $20 um, promotion from reading my three books. You knew I was going to say Amazon because they're such an amazing company. They have not bothered me about Corona. They have, they put something on their website and you know more than anybody because you worked for them that they're cool like that, man. They're cool. I think they get it. Do they do everything perfectly? No. But what company does, you know? I mean, I'm not going to fault them for that because I've worked for other big companies that, you know, all big companies do some shady stuff and it's not always intentional. Um, there, you know, things happen at a lower level that, you know, the CEO and the president, you know, the executives and stuff, they don't always know about it. You know, it, it's, it happens. You've got branches. This is when you have a big company. That's just the way it is. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying they're not any different than other companies in that particular respect. Where they are different from other companies is that they are trying to um, improve the way we practice capitalism, which is pretty exciting for me. So, okay, let's see. So I'm just smoothing out some of these leaves. While a lot of companies are not letting employees come to work, Amazon is hiring 100K more employees. I didn't know that, but little hearts for Amazon. I love you, Amazon. I hope to work for you someday soon. <laughs> I love it. I love to hear that. Because I did actually hear somebody uh, somebody was talking about how their dad's company is like laying off people. And that's pretty upsetting. You know, that, you know, because people aren't coming into work, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they were already planning on laying people off. And this is just kind of what tipped the iceberg. But that's just really sucky. You know, I, I just, I don't know. It's hard for me to get excited about our our corporate world sometimes because there's just so many practices I don't agree with. And so when there's a company like Amazon that I feel like they really focus on the future, they really stick to their leadership principles and don't, um, like, I, I think that they, they actually kind of stick to their guns, so to speak. Like, they're... they're Again, all companies have issues within when you get that big. It just is going to happen. But I think that more than any other company, they really adhere to their principles, which is pretty cool. Okay, now I'm just kind of putting in random, random leaves because um, I, I really want to get this moving. I'm sure you guys didn't come on here to hear my views about Amazon. <laughs> Maybe you did. I don't know. And I wasn't intending for this to get like, I guess it's not really political. It's sort of political. Um, but I'm definitely not talking about politics. Not on this stream. Maybe on my cooking stream. That's going to be a little bit more of an adult stream. So when I start my cooking stream, check in because it, it probably won't be as clean as this one. <laughs> Let's just say that. Also, if I ever do a coding stream, then that probably won't be either. Okay. All right. Now I'm just kind of doing, I want to fill in down here in the pot. Uh, I don't want it to be quite as um, empty looking. So I'm just going to pick up a couple of, like I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and maybe do like a little yellow here. I'm going to pick up a little green, do a little green here. And this, these are the short choppy strokes. And this gives the illusion that there's more going on down there. The illusion. So I accidentally colored over some of my leaves here. So I'm just going to go in here and do that. Okay. A 
Laura DuPont Health, thank you for telling me that about the hiring thing. That, it just fills me with so much joy. Okay. So I've got my light yellow color and my leaves that are over here on this side, I'm just gonna do little like that. I'm gonna clean my brush. They're not wet anymore. Uh, well, they shouldn't be because I haven't, I don't think there should be any paint on them. But if I just get some water on my brush and then smooth that around, might have to clean it off. So get a little water on my brush and just kind of smooth it around. What that's going to do is create a wash and that lightens those up a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, somebody else is getting emails too then. Okay, that's good. So it's not just me. I'm just making sure since Bloody Wing said that he wasn't getting any, you know, it's probably because I'm signed up for so many things, honestly. I think I got one from Panera. I got, I have a lot of junky apps on my phone. I'm like the epitome of, of people who take advantage of those um, like loyalty, customer loyalty things, you know, where like you get a free, if you, if you come get coffee at Panera or whatever, you get a free bagel or whatever. Heck yeah, I want my free bagel. <laughs> so I'm definitely, uh, I have a lot of apps like that where I get points or something every time I go, which is funny because I don't really go to that many places anymore. I used to a lot more. Okay, so um, I'm going to get some of my lighter green and I'm going to start coming in here and painting on some of mine. They're not, not all of them, but just some of them. Maybe there's some leaves in here that are just this color. I might mix a little bit of green in with that, the dark green. Uh, let's see. Okay, so every once in a while I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna come into where I, uh, you don't have to do it right away because there, it's gonna leave like an element of interest that like if it's not completely dry, all I'm doing is coming in and just kind of spreading it to the outside, but the inside would have dried a little bit already. So, so what, you, what ends up happening is it's got like a fuzzy look to it. Clean my brush and get this guy up here. That one had a lot of paint on it. That one I want to have just in the middle, just a little bit of the dark green to give it a shadow to make it look like it's a slightly different shaped leaf. Like it's got a point in it. So there, but see how you can still see that? So it makes it look like an indent. So that's how you create indents and in leaves. I'll do another one so you guys can see that. Actually, here, I'm gonna do one right here. So right in the middle. I'm gonna spread it out, I'm gonna fuzzy it out. I know I did the yellow on these earlier, but it. It did, it like dried a lot lighter than I thought it was going to. So I, I must have watered it down a little bit too much. So I'm going to do the indents on here. So I'm going to get my dark green, go right there in the middle. And then I'm just going to go right over it with the, the lighter color. There you go. Ta da! All right, let's see. Get some lighter color there. These are on the side where, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a mixed color here. So I'm getting a shape in there. I'm gonna pick up some of my lighter color 
and mix it directly with it. Um, come up here and just kind of move those around a little bit. Okay. Some more, some more. Good. Do 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 do. So every like five or six or so, just clean off and come in and do some do some stuff. And I, I'm not being particularly like, as you can tell, I'm not being careful about this in any way. Uh, so I'm not like, I'm just doing very squiggly marks. So this one I might do a little center too. We're almost done though, which is fantastic. We're doing great on time today. Considering that my holiday ones are almost always the ones that go over a little bit. Anytime I try to do anything special, it's like I can't do anything special, y'all. Because whenever I try to do something special, it always ends up going like way over. So this one, I had just a little bit too much of the dark green. So what I did is I brought in some of that lighter color and now I'm going to go over it. Here, this one probably is fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see there. Uh, so these got kind of a long time before I got to them. So they were mostly dry, but there's still a little bit so we can create some interest there. Like I said, you end up having this one patch that's like a lot lighter. So it's still interesting. Maybe a little here and a little here, a little there. This just creates layering. Oops. Starting to dry brush a little bit, so you just want to make sure you keep getting the brush wet. funny when my mom first saw me today I had the wings on and she just busted out laughing but it was nice it was nice to hear her laugh so. So I'm glad I'm bringing I'm entertaining somebody it might not be my actual audience but <laughs> I'm entertaining someone okay so here, I already did that dark place, but I'm, I still want to do a little bit of light. That's probably a little more light than I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to bring in a little bit of this green and mix it. Let's see. Let's see. What else? What else? At some point, I'm, I'm, as soon as I finish with this, these lighter colors, um, I'm going to uh, bring in a darker color too, like we did down here. Because we've got to have some darkness in here. It can't just be these two colors because nothing is ever two colors, right? Well, I mean, I guess some things are two colors, but not in nature generally. I guess that's what I was getting at. You know, you've always got, it's kind of like the human face that we were talking about the other day, like all the different colors in the human face. It just layers it in. Okay. Let's see, where else? Cause see, I've got all these that are like kind of one dimensional, you know, they, they only have one color. So I'm just gonna grab all of them, honestly. I'm just gonna grab all of them because we're gonna add some dark in here. Let's see, I don't wanna get too carried away cause then they start drying on me. Oops. Oop, 
this one, that one dried on me, but it actually was, there wasn't, there was, it, there wasn't very much there, so I was able to kind of get rid of it almost, which is interesting. I'm just continually, so just so you know what I'm doing here, I put some lighter color on here and I'm continually just like dipping my brush in the water, drying it a little bit on my paper towel. As you can see, my paper towel is like nice and gross now because I've been drying everything on it. And I'm just coming in and all I'm doing is adding some layers and texture. I have way too much paint on that one. So I'm going to spread the love here. And as you can tell, there's no rhyme or reason. That's still more. There's no rhyme or reason to how I'm going. I'm just kind of skipping around. But that's how you get it to look more random when you're not trying so hard to stay right in the same spot. You know, like, like I'm going to... Because what happens is you get into the mode of doing something, but then you gradually change over time. So then what happens is you can see it as it goes across. You can actually see track like where you where you started changing your technique and things like that because um you did them all together so if you do it like this where you just kind of spread them out you don't notice it as much you know like if i started using a little bit too much of my lighter color or something like that and it's actually it's fine if we use some lighter color over here more lighter color over here because this is our sunny side Keep on the sunny side. That's a song. I like that song. It's got a great message. Just be positive. Actually, if you are in my Discord, anytime you post your artwork, you get a B positive emoji, which is my little B logo guy. If you go to my website, you'll see he's right there on the front. Big B. Because I love bees. Okay. So I think we got everything. I think we got everybody. So let's add in some dark color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna, going to mix a little bit of my brown with a little bit of my green to give me like a, a brownish green color going to end up being kind of an army green almost maybe a little darker okay I'm going to add some water so it's nice and fluid and then we're just going to come in and in certain spots where it feels like it's maybe in the shadow a little bit we'll just we'll come in so definitely down here we've got shadow we already got our guys down here so we also want to get some of our stems. So I'm doing mostly the left side, like as if my leaves are kind of facing away from the... All right, so same thing with the yellow. We're going to come in with a water and just kind of spread it around. And we don't have to do it with the stems. Ah, uh, now some of these might still have, it might be slightly wet with the yellow and that's okay because then you get an even different color because it ends up blending on canvas. So as you can see, it's just layering in some darkness, layering in the darkness. I feel like I could do a show called Layering in the Darkness. I might actually, because that's how I need to write that down. Whenever you have an idea as an artist, write it down because if you're like me, you have so many ideas, I forget over time. So write down your ideas. I'm going to be writing that down because for weaving, we do a lot of layering in interesting ways. And it would be cool. Oops. 
So I accidentally missed some, missed some lines there. That's okay. I'm just coming in in different places and adding some of my dark. Almost done. We're run us there. Only some of you will get that reference. And by some of you, I mean one of you. There's something about these ones that are just, just really bothering me. It just looks too like like I tried too hard or something. So I'm She got it. <laughs> okay. Uh I'm looking to see if there's any place else. I mean, because we got the dark on this side. Let's see if there's any place else that maybe, like maybe like the side of, of some of our, you know, come up through the middle a little bit. I don't want to get too carried away. Because, I mean, it's looking pretty good the way it is. Let's see. Where else? I'm looking at, again, I'm looking at what you guys are seeing because it's a little bit farther away and it's at a different angle. So um, that's helping me. Like this one here, there's something going on with that one. So I'm going to see if I can fix that. I think I just went over the, the top a little bit like the outside of the leaf I went over went outside of my lines so we're gonna just add just a little bit of dark here and Let's see. So now what I'm going to do, just kind of come in and make like little, little juts, like little tiny lines. It just indicates that there's some darkness there. And also I'm going to go into like, allow it to go into the um, leaves a little bit. So then you can just creates more visual interest. Okay. Mm. I'm almost ready to call it done. I didn't mention it, but I do have my paint pen so that I can sign it. I always forget to tell you guys to sign your work, so I'm remembering this time. Let me pat my winged back, pat my wings. <laughs> For remembering. Okay. I like it. I'm calling it done. You got a pot of shamrocks, y'all. So here's what I'm gonna do. Look at this paper towel. It's so gross. Okay. Throw that away. Shake my paint pen. Make sure it's got some paint on it. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. We're gonna critique it and then we're gonna see if anybody followed along. I don't, I didn't get the impression that anybody was. Bloody Wing, I don't know if you were following along with um, digital. I don't know where you came in. Um, but, okay. First things first, I absolutely love my the terracotta pot. Like I like the choppy strokes. I like it so it gives it like kind of a, I didn't follow. Okay, well that's okay. Thank you um, for letting me know. Um, the, okay. I, I think the shadow turned out really great here too. Like in this table, it, it all looks very choppy. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent thrilled with the leaves, but I think if I just continued layering and I just continued going in with the two different greens, I probably could, um, you know, and then maybe even add some more in there, you know, maybe add some, some more like leaves in there, which maybe I'll do. 
off stream, but that might actually help kind of fill everything out. Um, other than that, I would call it successful. It looks like a pot of shamrocks. I think people would get that that's what it was. Um, and it's not, we have that color balance I talked about, the blue and the green, which are analogous and create a calming uh, effect. And then you've got that red, orange, terracotta color that creates a, um, uh, it's a complementary, so it creates that opposite uh, tension. Let's go ahead and look at Discord and just see if anybody posted anything. Does not look like they did, so it's just the original. Um, we can look at the original real quick though and just see the difference between mine. As I'm looking at it, I'm realizing that there really is uh, I, I really don't have enough leaves. Let me let me bring it back to mine. You can see. There's just not enough. I do have a lot, but not enough. So that's what I think I'll do. I think off stream, I will. I keep saying this, and then none of the ones that I've said I was going to work on off stream have I actually worked on off stream. And I keep, you know, saving my paint like I'm going to do it. But of course, you know, life happens. So, but I will try to fill this in a little bit more, and then I'll post a picture of it. So, um. Teacher Margo, sometimes you follow. Did you by any chance follow along today? I don't know if you got a chance to do that. Because I might have gone out to Discord a little too soon. That happens. Um, but look, 155, we are under two hours, y'all. Under two hours. I did it. Ah, a holiday special was less than two hours. It's the first time ever. So enjoy it while you can. <laughs> okay, you watched. All right, well, that's great. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anybody because I've done that before by accident. So in keeping with, I know you, some of you who came in later might have noticed my, my fairy wings honoring the fairy folk of Ireland, um, you know, because we, I want to celebrate them as well as St. Patrick's Day. So... Friday, I'm switching up. I normally do drawing on Tuesdays and painting on Fridays, but since I did painting today, I'm going to do my drawing on Tuesday and we're going to paint, uh, we're going to draw a fairy house. Very excited about that. So it's going to be like a whimsical, it's a little bit in the, it's an illustrative style. So what I'm going to be teaching is that illustrative style of making something kind of cute and whimsical, but it will be like a fairy house, like maybe out of a toadstool. Um, that you might see in books. So that's what we're doing on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for joining me today on this very special holiday themed pot of shamrocks, pot o shamrocks, if we really want to, pot of shamrocks, uh, St. Patrick's Day stream. Thank you very much. And you guys have a fantastic week. Hope to see you Friday.